big hits, but I think the key in that game with our defense played outstanding. I think our front did a heck of a job having the 45 yards rushing, uh, which led them to being one-dimensional. And I thought, you know, that, that allowed our, our players to tee off the play and do the things and win the, the, those first down battles, get them second long, third and long, allowed us to execute. But I thought our defense was outstanding in the night. Uh, offense, we had, our, we had 541 yards, ran for 319, threw for 220, but still didn't play close to what we could play and how we could play. And I was very disappointed coming out the second half with the miss, kind of had timeouts and misalignments, a couple of things there. Guys didn't focus on some things, had a penalty right off the bat. And we just went out and got a drive right before half to make a 13-3 and a two-score lead. And we got to come out and make it a three. And very disappointed in that for three or four drives in the third quarter. Didn't play when our defense held them at 22 yards total offense. And then the fourth quarter, we got going. I, but again, another sign of our offense growing, putting things behind them. We lined up and ran that football. Had two backs over 125 yards in the game. Uh, when we had to run it, big runs, big plays. Kellen did a good job managing the game, click, uh, you know, uh, getting us in the right checks, doing the right things again, being uh, selfless. And he took some shots, took too many shots in the game. We got to clean some pass blocking up to allow some of that to get better. But our special team, for the most part, man, shanked one punt. Other than that, we had the last kickoff return, which was disappointing that they broke out of there. But uh, for the most part, though, we missed a field goal, which was very critical in the game. So there's still a lot of things here that we can play a lot better, and we're going to need to with the nice two games coming up. And, Got to go on the road, play a great Georgia team, and we got to go play LSU. So we got a lot of work to do, but our team is getting better at staying more physical. We're getting better at the line of scrimmage. We just got to clean up some technical things, and we'll see where we go from there. Right side, Gabe, and then to the left, Owen. Every single game against a Power 5 team, your run performance has been able to build upon what it did in the previous game. Every single, what do you think this run game is capable of here down the stretch? Well, we'll find out. We're going to have some great opponents to do it against, and some guys are playing to run very well. And we're going to have to have that, though. You can't have your quarterback make every play, and you got to be able to respect the run so you can get the plays and the passes and take some pressure off of them, which we're able to do tonight at times. And and uh, But hopefully we'll keep growing in that area. Left side, Owen, and then the right, Christy. Yeah, Coach. Um, the way you run the football, was that kind of the game plan coming in to try to uh, establish that run and maybe take uh, advantage of something that they were doing? Or well, was we it did, about we want, y'all having some trouble early protecting and things Well, like we that? had some protection, but we had some run pass options, RPOs, a lot of things. We hit some nice plays to the tight end, and then they had to start respecting those things, the balls we were getting to the flat to the tight end and to the backs and some of that stuff. So it opened things up inside. We were able to keep a good mix. And Kellen was checking us and getting us in the right things. I mean, he does a great job of understanding the big game plan. He's growing mentally as a, as a football player really well. And uh, But, you know, you have to be physical. We wanted to be physical because if you allowed their front to be one-dimensional, they're too good. They were going to hit you. And, they, and you, you saw it tonight. They brought some pass rush at times. Right side, Christy, then to the left side. How valuable is it for you to have two running backs that can do what they were able to do tonight? Big time. Listen, because you can – how they overload a side, you got to be able to check and get back out of it. And like I said, the old school – People say you get two backs in the backfield. That's the that's the thing that people don't get to practice. In the old days, you used to be in the spread offense. They boy, how do you simulate that when teams start bringing it out? It's different. How do you well? How do teams simulate two back that don't do it? All the spread teams they got to practice. That's a whole different animal now. Taking those blocks and angles and things on there, and it's allowed us to, to be a better football team. Left side, front, Zach. Jimbo, your defense was only able to get one sack tonight, but I don't think that would be necessarily uh, like of a of how well you guys were able to get to the quarterback. So just your overall thoughts on your defensive line. Being able Outst- to get I thought they were team. outstanding in the run, goes for 45 yards, and they affected the quarterback. They made throws come out early, they made balls come out early, and got hits, you know, legal hits after the play. And that's where I thought, played very intelligently. Didn't take cheap shots, didn't have bad penalties, played with great, and like I say, toughness is intelligence is the key. You know, if you don't have intelligence with, with being tough, it doesn't work for you. And our guys will learn to do that and play more disciplined football. Front right, Travis. <coughs> We're able to get points on all uh, on all your red zone yeah. appearances, but no touchdown. three three no touchdowns. What uh, what was going uh, wrong there? We just had some execution issue. We missed a throw. Uh, what happened the first time down there? Um, I'm trying to I remember the second time we overthrew uh, Nias on a route to the sideline. We missed Ray. Thought he was going up, and he broke it off, and he was right. And we missed that one. Um, when we had a push off, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Wasn't it a push off? Mm-hmm. And we had the ball on the one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody's out there chicken fighting everybody's having a war and all of a sudden they're going to call all that them guys are mugging you and holding you the way they let you hold in college football which is ridiculous and then the, never mind it is what it is but and then on that one and then uh, it's all right it's fun I, don't care. I, I said it good I didn't I let it go I let it go and uh, the other but we, we got to get better down we, and what's funny we've been 11 for 11 the last two games 
And then we got them at the end. We got them down there and got the one in and, and pounded in. But we'll get better at it and work at it. And they're, they were a good team. They were man long. I told you, they were defense. They were long in the secondary. Had a good front. They're tough down there. Second row, Chris teams in from the left, Laura. How important was it for your team to take care of business in the stretch at home considering what you have looming? Big. And it, it shows you the maturity we had. And like I say, these games, you know, you have a chance to do it and do it in your home field. And, and uh, it's big to play. And then I want to do it here for 12th man, too. These people, this, there's not an atmosphere and environment like this in college football and what a fan base. Sixth largest crowd in history tonight. Coach, wow. to the left, Mark. Coach, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the, the emergence of Cordarian. He's gone from basically getting no time a month ago to you know, 130 tonight. Well, they decide they want to do things right. When they decide they want to do things right, we play them. Until then, we don't. And I, I don't mean that in a bad way. He's, he's a good player. I love him. But, you know, all there's so many little things before you put a guy in the game because that, that guy, you know, controls a lot. And he is a very talented guy. He's big. He's 240 pounds. He's physical. And those guys, you know, they're hard to tackle. He's learned to be a great blocker and do some things. And, and uh, he's a big weapon for us, no doubt. I'm, and I'm very happy he's playing like he's playing. Right side, Gig. Another guy that's been in and out of it, up and down throughout most of his career, but Oliver keeps getting opportunities. Now, you'd probably rather him pick a couple of those balls off, but I don't, I, mean, I don't know if I've ever seen six PBUs in one. I, I'm going to say, you know something, you say that. As I was at the end of the game, I said, Dad gum, he's in a lot of plays tonight. I mean, batting balls. Like you say, we'll put some glue on him. See, he needed to be when Lester was here. He needed to go back with Lester Hayes days. Put what Lester had on there. He might have got some 14 picks like Lester did with the Raiders. But uh, that would have been good. Left side, Alex. Hey, Coach, yeah, just kind of going off that, uh, uh, where do you like where the momentum is with the team heading into these last couple games? And what you well, here's what I like the most. We're practicing better on the practice field. We're off the, we ain't having the mistakes. The practices are getting over because we're not having repeats. We're coming ready to practice, being physical in practice, being more consistent, and it's showing up on the field. You know, we had a few extra penalties tonight, which was very disappointing to me. I thought we had too many. But – we hadn't had them in practice. Our alignment's taking care of the football. We only had the one turnover at the end, which is unfortunate. We're learning to take care. This is our practice and preparation. It's getting so much better. And I think they're now they're starting to see cause and effect. Young guys, young people don't always understand cause and effect. Because I do this, this is what happens. They want to blame everything in the world over, I don't get this. You control what happens to you. How you prepare, how you play, and what you do get you the results by the choices you make. And I think they're starting to buy into that and understand it truly. Time for a couple more to the back. Yes. Sir. Could you just talk about Isaiah Spiller's performance tonight and just what he contributes to the team? A young guy who's, again, another 100-yard performance for a true freshman. Uh, and, and I still think there's a lot of things he can get better on. He's still got to get better blocking in some things. And uh, like I can say keep being physical inside, but he's a natural runner. He's big. He's very deceiving. And what do you have, 124 carries tonight, too. That's getting, you know, that's getting a load and carrying it for 129 yards and uh, his long run of 20. See, that tells me something. tells me some t he's getting tougher. Learning to take that pounding, learning that's what you do against good defense. And when you go play these good teams like we're fixing to go play on the road right now, all these 80, 90 yard runs, that's all great. That ain't happening against some good people. You got to pound, pound, and those guns will come in time if you can wear and tear on them. And he's learning that, and, and you know that's what the kind of back he can be. Right, right, Travis, you wrap us up. <clears throat> on uh, Richardson's the 17 yard touchdown catch, he's wide open over there. Do you hold your breath a little bit on that kind of play because it just seems Heck, so no, easy? I was, I was <laughs> excited. I don't ever get him that open. <laughs> that was something we had on a bingo play. We had to show that it was a completely different formation. We had a lot of runs out of that, and really nice play and execution by all of them. All right, Coach, thank you. Thank you all.